The most common uh, comments about the lack of musical form in your playing that you might heard from your teacher, I definitely heard a lot, uh, would sound something like this. Uh, you gave too much in the beginning, there was nowhere to go. The climax part wasn't enough, um, you didn't give enough energy, try again. <laughs> Um, your playing was a bit boring and static and it, it's like didn't speak about anything. I want to hear a storyline. Try again. Maybe you haven't woken up yet this morning. <laughs> so um, today we're gonna talk about what do we need to have to create this magical flow in our playing. You know, something that uh, some pianists simply seem to have, and some never get. <laughs> someone addresses to musical form, one usually talks about the form that helps to structure music while listening or composing. Uh, we all know about binary, ternary forms, a sonata allegro, theme and variations, um, rondos, fugues, astinato, etc. And um, while filtering our listening experience with through those musical form templates certainly helps with um, kind of making better sense of music by understanding where we are approximately, what comes next. It seems to have almost no effect on our playing. So the topic I'd rather to talk about today is what do we need to create that storyline? What would give that natural flow, that drive to our playing? What would eliminate that static and boredom in our playing? And you probably already heard about phrasing, and yes, phrasing plays a significant part in everything I've just mentioned. But today, let's take a look at a bigger, uh, kind of broader perspective on a piece. And if we come back again to the phrasing analogy, you know, each block has uh, kind of its beginning, development, rising to climax, climax parts. And it could be, you know, main interval in the motif, main motif in the phrase, main phrase in the sentence. And now let's imagine that the whole piece is just a single block in the phrasing with its uh, main, more prominent climax part. And if we are kind of building the energy towards that part, we're going to have different energies uh, throughout the whole piece, uh, different, ener different, different uh, levels of energy throughout the whole piece. And uh, the examples of these um, levels of energy could look this way. Introduction of the story. It's a large energy, you know, um, it's not really like you are participating in the storyline yet. It's more like um, it's rather looking at everything from a higher perspective. Then beginning of the story is where you give very little energy, nothing is happening yet. And the development of the story is where you give a little bit of more energy, a little bit more movement. The rising to climax is where you take kind of full inhalation, preparing to uh, let all your energy out. The climax part is what I called this is it energy, where you give 100% of the energy and it's a real full exhalation. And after that, you might come back again to nothingness. You know, this is the conclusion of the story. So musical form is how we structure uh, energy blocks within a piece. That's all. <laughs> and today I'm going to have two parts. In the first part, I'm going to give you quite a few examples 
of how to find those blocks in a piece and I have made a new book, you can find it in the description below. It has all the examples I'm going to present you today, quite a thick book I think. And the second part will be how to connect your understanding of structure of music to your playing. So in other words, how to convey your ideas uh, through playing. So let's get started. Just like it's important to make sense out of all the phrases in a piece, especially if the piece has a rather monotonous, repetitive pattern, you know, with no clear development, we know they always have a tendency to become static in motion and energy, simply uh, uh, boring uh, to play and to listen to. Anyways, um, it's also important to know how to convey all your ideas about musical form through playing. And the best way to express your intentions through playing is to feel it in your intonation. And if I sing an interval out loud with intonation, let's say I'm going to sing with movement, listen to resistance, as we usually do. And I feel the energy of my intentions through these vibrations in between notes in my voice. It will sound this way. Uh, let's say I'm going to sing this interval. And uh, always try to mix, you know, the mood, the character of music with the uh, musical structure. It's not just, you know, a, a plan and um, like a clear beginning, but let's say enjoy. So if I were to play a joyful music, I would go into this mood, okay, and then I would kind of uh, put a layer of the musical form on it. So joy and I'm gonna sing joy beginning, developing, rising to climax, climax and probably conclusion too. So work with you know sorrow let's go to sorrow and also sorrow develop uh, beginning develop and rise into climax climax conclusion reason it always work out best, best for me to make the sadness. <laughs> um, Alright, so when I play, the energy I feel in my internal singing, just like I sing out loud, it will be internally, will affect the energy in finger muscles and that will create different touch tone and rubatos while playing. So now let's take a look at these the most boring <laughs> examples like i said you know they don't have real you know pro prominent development of the musical texture it's always kind of always the same and the same and the same so um, all these pieces might be quite challenging to play still you know trying to keep your audience attention and not falling asleep yourself Mm, so now let's just choose one of them, let's say second ballet, and uh, start intonating the melody with the meaning and energy of the form sections marked in this score. And first I'm gonna just sing out loud and then I'm gonna play probably. <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do. Let me just find it first. Mm -hmm. Mm, no, 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 not this. Okay, got it. All right. Um. Oh my God, it's knocking. I hope it's not really loud. Beginning development, rising to climax. All right. So we have three templates here. First is beginning development, rising to climax, climax. Then a small one, rising to climax, climax. It's it's like a little extension, I call it. It's it's very common. And then beginning, development, rising, climax, and conclusion. Okay, so that's quite clear in my mind. 
Now let's see. Um, what if I just sing, you know, with just um, em with just emotions, with no um, musical form? You know, let's say it's very peaceful, it's very calm. It's like you know, being at home, very cozy. <laughs> Uh, maybe even beside the fireplace. I don't know. That's always the the. That's what this music evo evokes 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 you know, inside me. So. Um, I already uh, feel some tension inside because I need some development. So now let's go with character plus musical form. Okay. So when you do it, you can just look at the score and feel it inside, you know, how it feels like, you know, peace and beginning, peace and development, peace and rising to climax, peace and climax, you know. Okay, then you go. And uh, guys, I'm not making any phrasing here right now, but did you feel some development, some storyline uh, in my singing? It works absolutely the same while playing. Um, if you just continue internally sing this way, um, everyone will feel it. Okay, so <laughs> that's quite a good example. And lastly, it's very important to have a huge map of the entire piece right before you start playing. That will affect your intonation, so, uh, you know, it will help you to gradate your musical form vibrations much better. Uh, trust me, when I start playing, I always ha know, okay, how many parts, what's going on every part. And then, you know, if I know that I, I have just one template, the beginning would sound a certain way, but if I know that there are going to be five templates, and this is just the beginning of the very first template, the beginning would be much, much, much calmer and deeper and very far away. The templates uh, we're going to take a look at in a second show how musical form is perfectly connected to phrasing. And uh, you will see that each part of musical form is a sentence, or sometimes it might be two sentences. And in the score, a sentence is marked with two or three great slurs, and those slurs are phrases. So basically, two phrases is a sentence, and a sentence is a single part of a musical form. Now, um, if you're not familiar with the phrasing structure, you know, finding motifs, phrases, sentences, uh, you can watch my playlist dedicated entirely to phrasing. And if you're not uh, interested in phrasing at all, then, you know, the examples I'll show you could just give you a very clear idea about arranging, uh, structuring a form in music. So, you know, approximately 90% of the time a part of a form could last a sentence, but sometimes it could last twice longer. Like I said in the beginning, it could last two sentences. So, always follow the musical texture as a guide. And, um, for example, in this piece, each block of a form has one sentence. Uh, that means each block will have two or three uh, phrases slurs. 
and uh, the best way to start is simply to uh, first um, you know allocate kind of the biggest parts um, so if you look at the for example end of the second page you can see there is definitely a new uh, absolutely different part stars uh, in E flat minor so we kind of know that somewhere on the at the end of the fourth line that's the end of the first part and uh, let's just find beginning and the climax part is the easiest way because it's usually in the very beginning and the, and the very end of this uh, big part and if you just go through this you can okay so all right um this is definitely one sentence so two phrase slurs in them and then you look at the end and try to find the climax part and you just go on Okay, two phrases and hey, there is another one. So uh, this sentence uh, gonna have three phrases. It's gonna be a big sentence and it's a climax sentence. And now all we need to do is just to basically fill up the gap. <laughs> so if you follow phrasing, you can see that in the uh, in the middle of of this part, there are gonna be two more blocks and it's very easy. The block that is right beside the climax part is always rising to climax. So this one also actually three phrases. And the block that is after beginning is usually development. It could be sometimes rising to climax, but usually development. So you start, this is your beginning. And now from here starts development. So here we have <laughs> beginning development, rising to climax and climax part. Um, let's take another look, maybe. Okay, I think this next tune is good. So apparently again, the first page is a, a first main part of this piece. Again, we're going to start finding the beginning and the climax part, which is in the beginning and in the end. And let's see how long it lasts. Okay, so this one again, um, very typical. Two phrases in a sentence, one sentence going to be one block. And then the end where it's written Deutsch. Okay, so this one apparently is going to have three phrases. I'm sorry for my clumsy playing, I'm not really interested in playing <laughs> here now. Um, so, alright, so we have the beginning and the climax part, that the climax has three phrases, one sentence. And now we just take a look at the middle section and again if you follow the phrasing you can see there are going to be three blocks. So what we're going to do again to name the block that comes right before the climax as a rising to climax part. Kind of suited with the harmony and the melody contour. And the block that comes comes right after the beginning, I'm gonna name development song. <coughs> Excuse me. And what is left uh, between development and rising to climax is intensification. It's usually where you know composer goes to a little bit another key, some modulations. Sometimes it gives maybe more thick texture. I don't know. So. Mm. So now we have five parts, five blocks in this part, beginning, development, intensification, rising to climax, climax. All right. So that, this, these are the examples of one sentence as a one block of a form. Now let's take a look um, when we have two sentences, for example, this sonata by Mozart. Again, the, we're gonna allocate the biggest part, which is the first page uh, in the main key. Then he goes, um, he modulates to uh, what is dominant. 
So let's work with this first page. Uh, finding the beginning in the beginning and finding the climax at the end. All right, um, sounds quite natural for one block and as we can see, we're gonna have two sentences and I have marked the beginning of second sentence in every block with a vertical line so it's easy for you to comprehend. And meaning that the first sentence is gonna have two phrases and second three. And the climax at the end with all this. So this is gonna be the first sentence two phrases and then we go to diminished resolve to G major and this one gonna have mm, this one also have two phrases okay so now again let's take a look uh, how we can fill in the gaps two two main blocks is gonna be in the middle section so the block that um, comes right before the climax part D minor it's gonna be rising to climax. And the block that comes right after the beginning is gonna be, I'm sorry for that, it's gonna be our development. So, second sentence. Okay, so <laughs> this is the example where one block has two sentences. And lastly, as you can see on the screen, a piece might have up to five musical form templates and uh, probably even more, depending on the size of a piece, of course. So now let's take some time and analyze different pieces, starting from those that have only one template and gradually advancing them to uh, long five templates forms. <laughs> so. The Schubert impromptu we already kind of took a look. The Mozart as well. Let's go to Elegy Borachmaninov. Here we have again um, a very typical form, beginning, development, rising to climax, climax and conclusion. And obviously in the beginning is beginning and the climax part it comes to fortissimo. And after that you might see you know, the last two lines where he writes just forte. You might either um, you know extend climax part or simply use conclusion you know after you go and then the end you like you know state this this is what it is about you know something like this um now what is interesting here as i'm looking through uh, is that each part actually has sometimes one sentence and sometimes two for example the beginning part has and here this is the end of the first sentence and then second sentence so bc beginning has two sentences and then the development has only one sentence but yet this is a kind of extended sentence and has three phrases then the rising to climax uh, classical again two sentences each sentence two phrases then the climax also one sentence again that has three phrases and the conclusion again also one sentence three phrases so and you might you can see you know basically it's beginning that has two sentences and again development one sentence rising to climax two sentences climax one sentence conclusion one sentence and as you can see again it's all based basically on the musical structure uh, because you know even here when he goes to pianissimo da -da -da -da. You can feel he's building up the tension, you know, like I said, he's preparing, like, deeply inhaling, and then here, <laughs> exhalation, this is it, <laughs> even with accents, um, fortissimo. Okay, um, what else do we have? Um, 
I love dream. Again, oh, let's isolate the first big part and find beginning and climax parts. So apparently this. You see, again, actually there are three phrases in one sentence. And um, let's just go through this and see where could be climax. That sounds, every time you know, you see this kind of climbing up, you feel like it's always a sign of rising to climax. And then you go. He changes this harmonies, he makes it quite um, intense, so I think that could be climax part. And he also makes this little, you know, crescendo goes to agitato, and then he goes with this hairpins. And this is. That sounds more like a conclusion going falling down. All right, so we have our beginning, we have our climax and conclusion. Let's fill it, fill up the gaps again. We also find, I think we also found our rising to climax part, like I said, when he's climbing up. <laughs> and then the only one that is left is between beginning and rising to climax is development. So this is our beginning and then development and rising to climax climax conclusion something like this and the next one is Mendelssohn Again, we're just taking the first big part. Actually, just the, actually the whole andante is one part. Good example. Um, um, well, uh, as I'm looking at it, <laughs> it's also interesting so let's say okay you can actually isolate it as a um, introduction you know and then when the melody comes you can name it development uh beginning i'm sorry so either you take both like three phrases and make it one sentence as the beginning or you just make the first phrase as introduction. It happens sometimes when one block is just one phrase. Okay, and then the climax is very easy to find. What is it? <laughs> um, a heart opening fortissima octave down, descending. <laughs> so uh, this is definitely climax. Mm. The question is rather I should continue with climax till the end when he goes to what is next? That doesn't really sound like climax for me, so I make it as a conclusion. You know, it's kind of conclusion, but something is about to happen still. So in this case, again, just like in the beginning, this climax part just has one phrase you see so introduction can have one phrase and climax can have one phrase and the conclusion will have three phrases so it's normal okay one sentence all right so between beginning and climax we should find development and rising to climax probably so this part what is it And this kind of always makes me feel it's rising. And it is. Okay, so this all is rising to climax, guys. Unless, 
again you want to make this just like intensification because this doesn't sound for me like rising to climax much and then from here again one raise block you will start your rising to climax <laughs> This music is so dramatic. Okay, so, so far what we have, we have introduction, one phrase, beginning, one sentence, then writing uh, intensification, when I have one phrasing, one phrase, uh, writing to climax, after that one phrase, climax, one phrase, and conclusion, one sentence. And so in between beginning and writing to climax, what is left is development. So after you finish your... <laughs> you go to development. So as you can see, it's based on the main theme, but with a little bit uh, variation, more complex and expressive. <laughs> oh my god, okay, my set reading. Okay, so we have introduction, beginning, development, intensification, rising to climax, climax and conclusion. <laughs> Next one is Nocturne that we just took a look. Oh yeah, this is a good example. Um, so we have Ballad. As I can see, each block is gonna have one sentence, so there's no surprises here. Um, and let's go ahead. So, <laughs> well, this is introduction, it's obvious. And second phrase. And then from here, um, I think every sentence is gonna have three, uh, two. I'm sorry, phrases. So it's very clear here. So let's find our beginning. And let's find out. Okay, um, it's kind of hard to find it because this is um, I will talk about this in my second part this is one of the kind where everything is kind of the same monotonous no much difference in dynamics no much difference in musical texture so it's kind of fine to guess what could be climax here I mean you might say it could be on the second page this A flat major modulation and then at the end the conclusion of all he just said so let's stick with that so then let's just go ahead and um, see how it goes so this is beginning right and this is development development and this is intensification and then this is rising to climax and climax climax uh, conclusion so I think um, that sounds quite natural <laughs> uh, next example all right let's take a look at Schumann um, Oh yeah, actually now we are going to the two parts form. I know you might say, it. okay, I don't want to call it binary because of course it's not binary. But you know what I mean. Before we always has like one template. Now we have two templates here. So considering there is a, re uh, a repeat sign, right? How you call it. We're gonna repeat this two line twice, so that's why I wrote it like B slash R. And there will development. And then when you repeat, you might go to rising to climax. And climax. And again, in the second part, I will explain. Uh, it's so so helpful with playing this kind of um, the same pattern music, so it's not get bored. 
because the intonation will be so much changed depending on the meaning of what you're playing. Okay, and then this is kind of your first template. Beginning, development, rising to climax, climax. And then you go to the second template. Beginning. Development. And then rising to climax. So if you play like this and you kind of try to um, put it in the limits of this template and you feel, yeah, that could go, then just go with it. <laughs> so here we have uh, beginning development rising to climax, climax, and again beginning development rising to climax, climax. Very simple one. Okay, I think I should start now here. And um, because playing through all the examples, it's just... Mm, it's just gonna take lots of time. So, like I said, in the description below you can find a book with all the examples and you can just, you know, based on what I just show you and explain to you, you can just go through it and understand better how everything works. Okay. So, anyways, um, I think that's about it for today and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.